just can't stop now. No, trying to find a way out. Hey, feels like they won't let me move, let me breathe, let me leave, just like a man, like a man. Yo, 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 what's going on? Welcome to the Polly Rob Podcast once again. I am your host, Polly Rob, and uh, we are unofficially sponsored by Medicine Ball from Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Shout out to Starbucks once again. I get it every morning, y'all. You know what it is. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to my podcast uh, via Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Google Play, uh, Stitcher Radio, and all the podcast platforms you possibly can get on. You possibly can get on. Make sure you subscribe and keep leaving comments. Um, if you get a chance, man, go to uh, Apple Podcasts and leave reviews. You know what I mean? Leave reviews. Uh, the reviews helps my podcast get up in the rankings. And if y'all love it and y'all want to see me do well, make sure you do that. We appreciate that. Um, also, I will be uh, bringing uh, the donation feature uh, to my podcast just so I can do some upgrades and do some ill shit. So uh, it will be our do- donation feature via Cash App, via Cash App. And my Cash App is dollar sign P-O-L-Y-R-O-B. You want to throw something in there? You want to throw a dollar in there? You want to throw 10 cents in there? You want to throw 69 cents in there for all you nasty motherfuckers? You know, whatever y'all want to do, it's up to you. I appreciate it. All love. All love. Um, I got a big week. First off, I haven't been, uh, I haven't done an episode in a while. Probably in about like 12, 11, 12 days. And I apologize for that. I apologize for that because I've been working uh, for real, I've been really going in and uh, we have our event. We have our event this Sunday, which is higher L.A., higher L.A. at the catch one um, on Pico in L.A. And it's going to be crazy. It's higher L.A. part two. You know what I mean? We got Jam Law as a squad. We got Jam La Records in the building. So y'all better be there. We got Ninth Wonder, Rhapsody, uh, Ruby Vincent, Heather Victoria, GQ, Ian Kelly, Crisis, Cash. Yo, we got a whole full set. That's just a jam lot squad. And then we turn around and we book West Side Boogie. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know who he is. West Side Boogie coming to the stage. We got uh, Larry June. Larry June is in the building. We got uh, the legendary battle rapper and dope artist Daylight. We got Daylight pulling up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That's the rap lineup. Then we got the DJ lineup. We got DJ Fat Jacks. We got DJ Party Dad, a.k.a. Verbs. Shout out to Verbs. We got DJ Inca One. We got uh, Tierra Monique, dope-ass DJ. We got Crystal the DJ. Man, we, we got crazy shit going on. Then on top of that, then on top of that, we got a whole band. We got a seven-piece band. We got Rick Jane and the band coming through. That's going to be crazy live. And we got some special guests that we can't say. We cannot say. We cannot tell. But you need to be there if you want to see. Make sure you go get your tickets at uh, Higher LA on Eventbrite. Type in Higher LA on Eventbrite and get your tickets. Right now, the tickets are going for... 1216, which is actually the date of the event. 1216, December 16th, Sunday, 8 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's going down. Higher LA. Make sure you check it out. So, enough of that. That's what I've been doing the whole week, preparing for that, getting all that stuff together. I will be hosting uh, along with Bad Luck. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Bad Luck. You know what I mean? And shout out to the Overrated Truth Show. Make sure you go check that out and show love to them. You know what I mean? So that event is going good. And uh, let's get into the topic of today. Now, I've been waiting to do this topic for a long time. I've been waiting to do this topic for a long time. And the reason why is because, you know, um, you know, nowadays people don't tune into what we're going to talk about as much as they used to. But at, at one point in time in our lives, this used to be the fucking lick. This used to be it. This used to be the only way you feel right with yourself every morning, every Saturday. You know what I mean? Only way you felt right with yourself. 
So we're going to talk about the seven cartoons that shaped my character. Let me say it again. The seven cartoons that shape my character. How I move, the type of personality I have, the type of things that I'm into. Cartoons did that. Let's not stray away from the fact that cartoons did that for me and for y'all. Y'all just don't want to admit it. Cartoons did that. And, you know, me coming from being a comic book fan, you know, first off, let's let's, let's, let's understand this. Comic books, um, when they first started making comic books, you know, through history, um, it, it was a way, uh, comic books was a way to um, put the situations that was going on in the modern world at that time. And uh, it, it allowed the kids to be able to deal with it via comic books. So when the war was going on, they would make comic books about a superhero in war fighting the Nazis or fighting the Irish or whatever. And um, they would use those comic books to tell the stories in a kid version to be able for the kid to, you know, be okay or at least work through the stuff happening in real time. Um, that's why you get the Captain Americas. That's why you get the Iron Mans. That's why you get the Spider Mans. Because these are all characters that um, reflect uh, modern society and they magnify it times 10. So that's how they were able to um, deal with a lot of the pain and a lot of the death that was going on in that time because those kids would read comic books and understand to a certain extent why. <clears throat> but in the, in the cartoon era, when cartoons started to come about, cartoons took a different turn. Cartoons were uh, designed over the course of time. They were designed to shape the ideas and the, the characteristics of what kids would grow up to be. So when you get the Mickey Mouses and you get the Donald Ducks, you get these certain type of traits that will be instilled in kids through the things that they do. And it ends up giving them a sense of what they feel like they want to be when they grow up. You know what I mean? Like when you get a Yosemite Sam that's using a gun, um, you know, that's trying to protect his land from, you know, the rabbit or the duck or whatnot, you know, that's the idea of a police officer. That's what a police officer would do. So, you know, in a cowboy police officer, it all trickles down. You know what I mean? Then you would get, um, you know, uh, uh, what's the, the, the rooster name, the, the, the rooster guy? You know, he's sitting there protecting, you know what I'm saying, uh, all the roosters that's around. He got his little uh, baby rooster. So that identifies with farming. That identifies with the things that happens with farming. Um, so over the course of time, you know, comic books are shaping your ideas, your character, the way you move, the way you do things, how funny you are, stuff like that. So I wanted to talk about the seven cartoons that I feel like shape my character for, for for good or for bad, for better or for worse. You know what I mean? So let's get into that. I don't have a lot of time because I got a lot of stuff to do, but let's get into that because it's going to be fun. And, and over the course of this podcast, I want y'all to think about the, the cartoons that shape your character, that shape your ideas of how you do certain things. It's going to be fun. So first one, let me take a sip of my medicine ball. Hold on. Ah, still hot. So the first one, and this is not in any particular order, not in any particular order. And it's not uh, from best to worst. Uh, and it's random. It doesn't go by year or none of that. It's just random. So the first one is He-Man. The first cartoon that I'm listing that shaped my character, He-Man. And, you know, He-Man, If you, for, for y'all that don't know, for the young ones that don't know, he-Man was a guy who, you know, was moving around in, you know, a post-apocalyptic era, you know what I mean? And he was trying to, you know, find out the ways of the world or whatnot, and he was trying to figure out how strong he can get, how, 
how how determined and how uh, strong he can get as a warrior. You know, obstacles in his path. You know what I'm saying? He got the villains that come through. And, you know, he has his friends that he fights with. And he has a sword. He has a sword that can be, um, you know, commanded upon, you know, call. You know what I mean? And he's a scrawny little dude. But when he summons the power, he turns into this big old swole dude with a ill sword. You know what I'm saying? His cat gets big and gets swole and he go and he, he fight the villains and he do his thing. And He-Man was the first like cartoon that taught me how to stand up for myself. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the concept of that, you know, now that I think about it, it was like, you can be, you know, little and regular and whatnot. And it's the times where you need to stand up for yourself it's where you, uh, you know, psychologically get big and get, you know, swole. And, and that's that's it's, that's what a, what standing up for yourself was about. It was about getting big and saying no to well, whatever's going on. You know what I'm saying? So when I was in school and you would have your bullies and you would have your people that, you know, that, that tried to, you know, do some foul shit to you. You know what I mean? It was that time where you had to really get big and you had to jump up and say, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to, you know, confine to your ways. And you had to you had to fight or get down or you had to stand up for yourself, whatever it was. I remember um, um, and back in Brooklyn, uh, I went to uh, PS, uh, PS 81 and uh, I believe I was in third or fourth grade. But anyway. Um, I was in um, my teacher's class and it was this bully named Sanko Wright. I'll never forget Sanko Wright. So Sanko, if you're out there, we all good. It's all love. But I got to tell the story. You know what I'm saying? That's my boy now. So, but uh, there's a bully named Sanko Wright. And he used to torment everybody. He used to torment everybody. And he used to torment me. You know, take my lunch tickets. You know what I'm saying? Mess with me like he'll walk by the class and mush me in my head. He'll snuff me. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, doing all the crazy shit. So one day, you know, he came and he took my lunch. He threw it on the ground. And I was pissed. I'm like, why you do that for? You know what I'm saying? And my brother always told me, like, stand up for yourself. Stand up for yourself. He kept telling me. So, you know, Senko was like, what you want to do? And he pushed me down on the ground. And I got up. When I got up. I got up so fast and I just start firing on him. Bow, 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 bow. Start firing on him. And I backed him into a corner into the gate. And I start firing on him on the gate. And everybody was just, go, go, go. And you know what I mean? And I, I'm fighting it, but I'm crying at the same time. Because I don't like to fight. So I'm, I'm firing on him and I'm crying at the same time. And at that point, just like the cartoon, this is when I got big. This is when I got big and strong and stood up for myself. Just like He-Man comes in and he pulls out his sword, you know what I mean? And he just puts it in the air and, you know, I am he man. And he goes in and he, he takes care of business. So I did the same thing. So, you know, I really felt like he man was just one of those cartoons that allowed, you know, kids, especially kids, uh, smaller kids to be able to stand up for themselves and, you know, do what they're supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? To protect themselves and move throughout life. You know what I mean? So he man was dope. Um, number two, number two, uh, Smurfs, the Smurfs, don't be acting like the Smurfs, them little blue guys and girls wasn't fire. Come on, man. The Smurfs. So I like the Smurfs because it wasn't one of my favorite cartoons, but it was one of those cartoons in between my two favorites that I would watch. And I, I can enjoy it. I can enjoy it. It wasn't until later that I started to realize uh, why the Smurfs stayed around so long. Because that was one of those cartoons where it taught you how to respect and love your family and your friends. And, you know... Treat your treat your friends as if they're family. You know what I mean? We never kind of knew um, everybody that was around the Smurfs and, you know, all the all the different uh, characters. We never really knew if they were family or friends. 
but but they're all were treated like family. Everybody was treated like family. And, you know, of course, Papa Smurf, you know what I mean? And you got Grumpy and then you got, uh, it's, it's a, I forgot all the names. I, I forgot all the names. I got to go watch it again. But, um, you know, and you got the girl Smurf, you know what I mean? She come through, you know what I mean? Everybody on her. So you never, so you know, half of it was like, okay, some of them was like, uh, uh whatever. And then some of them was actually trying to politics. So they might have been friends, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, they all showed love. So that really taught me how to appreciate family, how to deal with family, because you couldn't deal with um you couldn't deal with all the Smurfs the same. Everybody was different. One was funny, one was pissed off, one was always working, one, you know, one was painting. Everybody was different. That's when I started learning that everybody has a different type of character, has a different type of mood, has a different type of feeling. You know, Smurfs really express like ultimate feelings. You know what I'm saying? A part of, you know, uh, their dialogue. You know what I mean? One of them was sad all the time. One of them was, you know, was was empathetic. You know what I mean? It's, it's so many different emotions. So that that taught me how to appreciate friends and family for what they are. Then it also taught me about finding my talent because I used to watch the one that paints all the time and he had like kind of like a, a an Italian accent. And, you know, I used to watch that because I used to draw. I used to draw pictures. And then you got one that was into music. That was, you know, I, I was honing in on that. Then you got one that was cooking all the time. I love cooking. So, so it, 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 it kind of sparked the idea for me to find what my talent actually was. And, and I end up, you know, doing music, end up loving cooking. Um, you know, uh, the artist part I put to the side, but I could still get out on my, on my drawing. I can still do my thing. And I actually use drawing early in my uh, days to actually make friends. I, I used to draw like Ninja Turtles and Smurfs and um, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff like that to make friends in school. So it just taught me a lot about finding my talent. You know what I mean? I really appreciate that. Um, one, one, uh, let's get to number three, one show that actually, um, one cartoon, I would say that got me into technology heavy, the transformers, the transformers. Now the transformers got me into technology really heavy because aside from the cars being able to transform, like. Me and my brother used to watch it constantly, constantly, constantly. Um, but he loved it because of the aspect of the cars. You know, the Corvettes and the trucks and, you know what I mean, stuff like that. I really didn't care about that part. I, I cared about them actually transforming and moving into something. So when my brother actually got the action figure, uh, I broke his first Transformer action figure because I wanted to see how it worked. I wanted to see how it worked. And he was pissed. He beat me up for it. It happens. But I wanted to see how it worked. And then when they would get into, you know, the space shuttle or the mechanics and stuff like that, you used to see all those buttons and what did what. And it was always a laser that was shooting somewhere. And it was always, you know, something that, you know, came all the way together and, 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 and formed something. And although Voltron was the first to really combine like different um pieces of machinery and form one big thing transformers was so in detail about them coming from another land alien technology you know uh talking about what can be changed um you know it was so much in embedded in that voltron was really like really about you know a monster coming to town and fucking up shit and then voltron stop them but um, Transformers was about, you know, these robots are trying to find a home. They got, they got the ultimate technology, but one of the biggest things is that technology doesn't exist without having a home to host it in. You know what I mean? So that taught me a lot. It just opened my brain to learning about computers, learning about technology and stuff like that. And just by me being a, a, a computer genius now and just being a nerd at the shit, you know, I really think Transformers and any even transform, you know, uh, 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 fast forward to now, you know, with all these Transformer movies coming out, like you see the detail of technology 
and graphics and stuff that they do, like the CGI is crazy. I would have never thought in my years that we will be able to successfully pull off the Transformers actually transforming. Like for real. When we seen it in, in, in the cartoon, we was like, yo, this is dope. If we could see this in a movie or something, it'd be killer. But our idea of the movie was still a little bit more realistic, almost, you know, looking like, you know, cartoon and halfway real life, like you're looking at an NBA live game or something like that. That's what we was thinking. We never thought that we would be able to see the stuff that Michael Bay and them was doing right now. That's why I'm forever grateful for every Transformer movie that they put out. Because that is, shit is amazing. I don't care what y'all think about the storyline. I don't care what y'all think about the characters. I don't care. Them movies is bomb. From what we were watching to what they can do now is amazing. It's amazing. Transformers, man, I got into technology or, or was opened up to technology from watching Transformers. Number four, uh, Animaniacs. I got all my little funny antics and from Animaniacs. So let me go back a bit. A lot of people will say that they got the humor from, you know, Tom and Jerry, um, you know, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, stuff like that. Not me. I didn't really watch that too much, which it was cool. I watch Animaniacs, which is the the after from all of them. And Adam, Animaniacs was funny. It was witty. It was a lot of comebacks with the jokes. It was just all around a pleasure. And if anybody knows me and, and you know, they talk to me or I'm, I'm in my silly mode, they know I always like to say slick shit on the side. And they did that all day. That's why everybody, you know, people uh, uh, dislike in the show, they dislike the three Animaniacs. Because they would always do and say something based on what you just said and they'll flip it into a joke. I love that. I love it. I love it. That shaped my whole humor in the way that I talk shit and the way that I, I'm sarcastic and the way that I be funny. And I love Animaniacs. All the characters, there were smaller, you know, uh, kid versions of the major characters, but they just have so much wit and so much, pizzazz you know what i'm saying and i love that about animaniacs and i actually uh, i wish animaniacs would have ran for longer than it did because it was really really a great cartoon it was a real great cartoon to come home to because you would come home from school and watch the animaniacs and i i really really enjoyed that um you know, and that came from, you know, Tiny Toon Adventures and stuff like that. But I really loved the Animaniacs. It was fire. You know what I'm saying? And I would watch it like forever again. And shout out to Tiny Toon Adventures because that was the, the prequel to Animaniacs. So shout out to Tiny Toon Adventures. Um, Let's get back to technology. Let's get back to that. You know, technology is one of my biggest things. But aside from technology is the aspect of engineering, being able to put something together the right way. So I got to give it up. Got to give it up to number five. Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget. A man that has a mechanical body. Mechanical arms, mechanical legs. He can stretch his neck. He can could, he could fly with the propeller. He got Inspector Gadget. He was like one of those uh, Swiss Army knives as a man. Inspector Gadget was, was one of my favorites. And 
that taught me how to fix stuff because it was the little girl on the side that used to always figure out different things. And although Inspector Gadget was, you know, he they put him as being dumb, but he was somebody that can always find a way out of something. He was like our cartoon MacGyver. He was our cartoon MacGyver. Um, and I love Inspector Gadget because it taught me how to fix things, how to put stuff back together, how to dismantle it and put it back together. That was the you no know, the best part about me watching Inspector Gadget is putting stuff back together. Where you know the kids after me got Bob the Builder. No, I got Inspector Gadget. I got Inspector Gadget, and he's solving crimes. Be well, the little girl solving crimes really, but they solving crimes. They solving crimes. I was with that for sure. Inspect the gadget. From that, I used to bust open the speaker, put it back together, bust open the tape deck, a Walkman, put it back together, try to put it back together until I, I got to a point where I was able to put it, put it back together. And then it, it drove me to eventually go to school for um, computer science and computer engineering. And getting a degree at that, getting an AS degree at computer science. So that definitely had a major effect on me with technology and fixing stuff. And I loved it. And the Claw is by far top five villains in the world. Top five cartoon villains ever. The claw, for sure. With the cat, for sure. Number six, we almost to the end, y'all. We almost to the end. But you see how these cartoons can, you know, shape the way you move and the way you do things. Just think about the cartoons you used to watch. And I want to hear comments about this. Number six, this, this cartoon taught me that the importance of you knowing who you are and what you're on this earth to do is essential in you living prosperous, living successful, living righteous. It's about you knowing what you're on this earth to do. That's what it's about. Pinky and the brain. Pinky and the brain. One was a genius. The other's insane. Now, I know, you know, y'all thinking like pinky and the brain. What? Yes. Pinky and the brain taught me that knowing your purpose in life and knowing those that's next to you is important. Brain was the guy who was trying to take over the world. Pinky was the guy who eventually stopped him every time. But he didn't stop him because he meant to stop him. And he didn't even stop him because it was something he was supposed to do. In my eyes, it made me realize that There's some people in this world that help you realize what's more important than your agenda. Sometimes enjoying what you do is more important than winning at what you do. There was an episode where brain actually took over the world. I don't know if y'all remember that. He actually took over the world. And he did it without Pinky by his side. And once he did it and Pinky wasn't there, he was miserable. He was miserable. And he did something to rewind or reverse 
whatever he was doing to get Pinky back because that was more important than him taking over the world. That's what I'm talking about. Knowing your purpose in life, but also knowing someone else's purpose in life. Are they there to help you? Or are they there to hurt you? We always thought that Pinky was there to hurt Brain, to stop him from doing whatever he was supposed to do. But in actual reality, he helped him. He helped him to finally understand that being a genius is, is enough. Being a genius and being great at what you do is enough. And being around somebody that you care about and you love and doing what you love is enough. That's enough. Another cartoon, Pinky and a Brain, that taught me about so much technology I loved it. I love shows that taught me about a lot of technology. It's a beautiful thing. But with this cartoon, it taught me not just about technology, but how to use it. Uh, now, of course, Brain tried to use it to take over the world. But if you really watch the certain things that he did, there were small instances of, you know, of course, genius that we can eventually see today. And sometimes some of the people, some of the brightest people don't have the best intentions, but they have the smarts to be able to keep this world going and use forward thinking. Sometimes you just need to, you know, change the direction a little bit. And I appreciate Pinky and the Brain for that. My last one before I go. And this is a dear one to me. I know everybody's going to be like, why the fuck did you watch that? That's not for you. But I watched it. And it shaped one of my biggest characters, characteristics. Of who I am. It taught me how to love. Beyond the concept. Of things going wrong. That's a big thing man. Someone could do you wrong. And you could be mad forever. And never forgive. I've seen some of the best people go through the roughest times because they didn't want to forgive or they didn't want to love. And this cartoon at an early stage taught me how to continue to love through all the pain that you might endure. Just keep loving. And number seven is the Care Bears. Yes, I said it. A ugly, chubby nigga from Brooklyn is watching the Care Bears. You fucking right. It taught me how to love. It taught me how to show love. You're not a man if you can't show love. You're not a human if you can't accept love. Out of all the bad stuff that was happening in the world, the Care Bears will try to stop it. The pain that gets stronger. And then when all else fails, they come through and say, let's do the Care Bear stare. 
and show ultimate love until the pain goes away. I know some people right now that need that shit right now. They need that love. They need that ultimate love to get through where they're trying to get through. I know a lot of y'all need that right now. That was a cartoon then, but that lesson is needed now. For real. Some of y'all can't get past the pain. Some of y'all can't get past the hurt. Some of y'all hurt every day. And y'all need somebody to come through and show that love. Show that love and let you know that it's more to this life than bathing in pain. Than bathing in the bullshit. It's more to it. It's love out here, man. Go get it. Go chase that. Go chase love. It's out there. It'll come to you. Each Care Bear had a symbol on their belly that symbolized something different, some form of affection, some form of love. Beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. That's something we need now, man. That's a part of my character, whether I like it or not. It's a part of who I am. I'm a Care Bear. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. I am. I'm a Care Bear. I care about people. For real. I care about people. I'm a Care Bear. Y'all should be one too. At some point in time in your life. Man, that's crazy. Man, I appreciate y'all watching, you know what I'm saying, or listening in, you know what I mean? Uh, for those that's watching on my Instagram live feed, shout out to y'all. Um, this is the end of my podcast. I hope y'all was rocking with me. I hope y'all appreciate what I'm bringing forth to the table. Make sure y'all subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Leave those reviews. SoundCloud, uh, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, and everywhere you can get podcasts, go check out the Potty Rob Podcast, man. And I'm, I appreciate y'all. And, uh, you know, donations is accepted via Cash App, dollar sign, P O L Y R O B. That's my Cash App. Any donation is good. I'm trying to upgrade, trying to keep this thing moving. You know what I mean? And uh, make sure you check out Higher LA this Sunday. 12 16 December 16th at the Catch One LA nightclub. Make sure y'all come out, man. It's gonna be live. And uh, you know, this is what I do, man. I appreciate y'all, man. It's, man, it's the Potty Rob Podcast, man. Signing off. Peace. <laughs>